G'day, and thanks for joining the Woodworking Masterclass today. I'm Steve, and welcome to my workshop. In the coming weeks, we're going to turn a pile of rough sawn timber into this beautiful period style side table, complete with dovetail drawers and four hand matched cabriole legs. And along the way, I'll be sharing many tips, tricks, and techniques that I've learnt, developed, and used for over 30 years as a professional woodworker and fine furniture maker. Along the way, we'll be making some very useful and handy jigs that can be used not only with this project, but any other projects you should undertake in your woodworking adventures. The reason I chose this particular project is because it has a lot of traditional techniques involved with it. Even though a lot can be done with machines and power tools, it still requires a lot of hand tool usage, which creates a wonderful opportunity to learn new skills or hone the ones you already have. And when broken down into small manageable parts, as we'll do, it will be even within the reach of the most novice of woodworkers, and yet at the same time challenging for those with more experience. So if you'd like to join me now, we'll waste no more time and we'll start on the project. Okay, when I start building a piece of furniture, it starts out in book form. I just doodle on a pad until I get a design that I feel is worthy of being built. I then move on to a full sheet of MDF and build or draw the piece I want to build in full size. That allows me to get ratios and balance and get a pleasing effect. And I found over time, it's a lot easier to rub a line out and draw a new one than have to make a new leg or a new drawer because it doesn't quite suit the design. Once this is done, I take all my measurements from this board. Now, in as far as sourcing timber, a lot of people nowadays buy their timber pre-dressed or called DAR, which stands for dressed all round. The advantage, of course, with dressed timber is it's flat. You can see the figure, you can see the grain, and it's nice and square. Unfortunately, it does have its limitations. I much prefer using rough sawn timber. The disadvantage is obvious straight away. You can't see what the grain or the board is going to look like. But the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages. For example, rough sawn timber is generally cheaper than dress timber. Also, it makes more species available for you because timber yards carry a lot more in rough sawn. The thing I like as well is timber today, or the furniture today, is generally built in 19 mil or three quarter inch. Whereas antiques and furniture of yesteryear were built in seven eighths or 22 mil. So if I've got a rough sawn board at 25, I then have the option to either machine it down to three quarter inch or 19 mil or 22 mil. Another great advantage is if you, in storing your timber, should drop anything on it, it gets stained, it gets wet, or it gets bruised. By the time you've machined it down to the right size, all those blemishes would disappear. With dressed timber, that's your finished size. And if you get any blemishes or stains on it, you're stuck with them for life, or you've got to use another piece of timber. But when you're buying rough sawn timber, don't assume that it is square and flat, because in most cases it's not. And we have to machine the timber. Now the first part of machining the timber is to give us a flat surface that we can run through a thicknesser. Now if you're like me and many other woodworkers, you have a thicknesser and a jointer, but the jointer isn't as wide as the thicknesser, we have a problem. Because if your board is wider, then your, thick, your jointer table, you can't do it on the jointer. Well, you can, if you saw it up the middle and then machine it separately and glue it back together. But frankly, it doesn't look professional in a finished job. So the other way is to flatten it by hand. And that's what we're gonna do. Work out if it's cupped, twisted, warped, or bent, and then flatten one surface so we can put it through the thicknesser. But before we do that, let's make our first workshop aid. And it's a very simple one. It's called a bench hook. Very easy to make, very easy to use, but very, very useful. All you need is a piece of scrap timber, plywood preferably. I found this bit in my throw out bin. It's cut square, roughly A4 size. Another thing I have a lot of in my workshop is 2B1 pine. Now the length of this 
generally you can pick up for under two dollars but make sure you get a nice straight piece and clear so there's no knots or pith in it that way you can use it for a lot of purposes cut some lengths to the width of your pine two lengths so you end up with two pieces like that another thing i have and use a lot in the workshop is 30 mil gyprock screws i don't use them for making furniture but they're ideal for just holding things down all we'll do square your 2b1 up to the pine the ply and then three screws in fact two screws you most likely do Hook that bit over your bench and repeat the process with the other piece. And there you have it, your first workshop aid, a bench hook, and we'll be using it later on. Now, back to flattening timber. Before we can flatten timber, we of course have to work out if it needs to be flattened. And how do we do that? We use what we call winding sticks. And if you don't have any winding sticks, that's okay, we'll make a couple right now. Get your bench hook you just made, get that pine again, get a saw, and cut roughly a 300 mil length. Now go to the table saw or band saw and you split that up the middle. What I do is mark top on two pieces with arrows pointing to the join that's going to happen when you resaw it. And then you end up with two winding sticks. How we use these winding sticks? Get your board, the arrows pointing the same way and you sight down the board. And as you can see, this stick is slightly higher than this stick, which means we've got a twist in the board. That's what we've got to get out. Now how I flatten the board and get the twists out is I use three different hand planes. There's a scrub plane, a converted number four, and a shooting plane. If you look at the blade on the scrub plane, you can see it's very, very severe and it removes a lot of stock. The converted number four has got a convex blade that I ground myself. It's not as savage as the scrub plane, but it still removes a lot of stock. And then a normal number seven shooting plane. So we know where the high spot is. I'll mark that with a, piece, a pencil. And when we come back after the break, we'll put it in the vise and we'll flatten it. Okay, see you after the break. <laughs>